A carefully chosen strategy for small and mid-cap investing has the potential to generate astronomical returns and, you know, propel an investor towards the goal of financial freedom. That's what we call multi-baggers in stock market parlance. But the key words here are carefully chosen strategy. So what do you have to keep in mind? Well, ace investor Basant Maheshwari shares his learnings with us. Multi-baggers, we've defined the word in our conversations before. What are the defining features of, you know, large wealth creating stocks or multi-baggers as we call them? So the first definition of a multi-bagger is a company that goes up at least 5, 7, 10 times over a period of 4-5 years. If a company is going up 10% in one day and it's being advertised on TV, today's multi-bagger picks by Basan Maheshwari is a waste of time. Okay. Because... Honest of you to admit that. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> because multi-baggers by definition have to go up multi-times. They don't move in percentages, they move in times. Mm. So, if a stock has to go up 10 times, either it has to be available at 10% of what it is worth. So, it's like buying a banana peel for 50 paise and hoping that somebody would buy it from you at 5 rupees. That's the first thing, the easiest thing. So, you buy a 1 rupee worth of something for 10 paise. So, it goes up 10 times and you make it 10, 10 times money. In today's world of information and understanding and awareness, it's very difficult to figure out that something would actually be available for 10% of what it is worth. It would have been discovered. It would have been discovered. People would have already... And why would the seller sell you something? Even if it is, there will be a seller strike. Nobody would sell you. So you get this at the point of maximum panic. Maximum panic, somebody is being sold out of his leverage shares, there's a margin call, the markets are collapsing and people say post-COVID life will never be the same again, maybe half of humanity will be wiped out. At that time, you're more worried about your health and your life than about the stock market. And normally the commentators and the critics and the anchors and the tutorials will ensure that you don't call up your broker at least to buy shares, you would only sell them. So basically, figuring out if you can buy something at 10 paise for what it actually is worth, 10 times above, which is 1 rupee, is not possible. Even if you get it, you won't be able to allocate much. What's the next best thing? You have to move away from the crowd. Nobody goes into the future. Because people, by nature, they are unaware of what the future brings for them. So you have to buy something which is worth 1 rupee now, Maybe we'll trade 1 rupee 25 paise, but you know could be worth 12 and a half rupees 5 years down the line. That's the easiest way to buy a multi-bagger. Not the easiest thing to forecast. There is a difference in these two things. So there's one thing of being able to buy something at one or something at 10 paise which is worth 1 rupee. And there's another thing to be buying something which is worth 1 rupee at 1 rupees 25 paise and assuming it to go to 12 and a half rupees over the next five years. So what are the attributes of this company? If it has to go up 10 times over the next five years, there has to be growth. Growth makes a stock cheap. Growth creates incremental revenue, incremental EPS, and the current price earnings ratio, which is the market price divided by the EPS, keeps collapsing year on year, year on year, year on year. But for that, you need growth. Higher the growth, higher the probability of you to make a multi-bagger because higher the growth, lesser the current PE would become with each following year of incremental growth. Sure. So first you need is growth. Second is you need scalability. If there is no scale, where would they grow in? Like we shared this example of how about remote control battery operated toothbrushes? How about wipers on the spectacles? Brilliant innovative ideas, but it's got no market. How many people would buy a remote control battery operated toothbrush? You just open your mouth in the morning and press a button and you're done with it. It doesn't have a scalable market. So you need a scalable market. So the moment you have a scalable market, your product becomes commoditized. You cannot have a scalable market in something which is exclusive and niche. So that's another problem. Rarely will you find something where the product is scalable and the pricing is in the hands of the seller. It happens in pharmaceutical companies. 
But again the same problem, a pharmaceutical company would have discovered a new drug. In the mid 70s, I think there was Glaxo who discovered Tegamin. I don't know, ulcer was very difficult to handle. So Tegamin was the drug which you could take and your ulcers would normally get healed on their own. So you could put a Glaxo stock made two, three times over the, a period of three, four years, but Tegamin was just one of the products at Glaxo. So if Pfizer is ready with its anti-COVID drug, that's just one of the things in Pfizer. It's not the only thing. And if you're figuring out that this is a company which is only going to make an anti-COVID drug, be rest assured they can't make it. They would not have the infrastructure. They would not be able to pay salaries. So basically, if there is a niche item, then it's not scalable. If it's a commoditized, it becomes scalable. There would be free entry and exit. But your first mover advantage should ensure that in the large market, there's space for everyone. That's what managements normally say when they set up competing businesses which are not leader they say the market is large there's space for everyone there's no there's never a situation of being of having space for everyone otherwise monopolies would never be so much sought after so the subtext of what you're saying is that get in when there are no other competitors visible there is an opportunity at hand scale is an option very much an option but as the market gets crowded you as an investor in that stock could be looking at a potential exit at that time. Yes, and there are other ones also. For example, the management. If the, com if the sector is in focus, management don't matter. Unitech went up 1000 times, the promoter went to jail. But somebody made a lot of money in between. If the sector is not in focus, it's not in flavor, then the management truly matters then it's got a return on equity because return on equity would compete with your growth. If you don't have a high ROE, it will not be a self-generating model. You would need to dilute equity and take debt. That's the only way you can grow. These are the four, five, six, seven basic criteria to look for. But then it's like a beauty contest. Nobody gets a 10 on 10 in a beauty contest. Even if you get six or seven out of 10, you're done with it. Can large caps be multi-baggers? Same thing, if a large cap can grow at 35% for extended periods of time, they can be multi-baggers, but they can't be multi-baggers in the true sense of the word because they already start from a high PE ratio. Take the HDFC bank journey, for example. It, it has been a multi-bagger of sorts, but HDFC bank never came cheap. And I will tell you why. Because it had a parent, HDFC Limited, which was acting like a quasi-private equity fund it brought its company to the fore only when it was sure that this is the valuation that I want. So basically, large caps can be multi-baggers, but multi-baggers by definition need a low PE to start from and a high PE to end. So if you start with a 10 PE and end at 50 PE, 5x of the money has already been made. But large caps, you can't find them at 10 PE unless they are commodity or cyclicals, in which case it will never go to 50 PE. So large caps can make you outsized gains, can make you good returns, decent returns, big returns. It can change your life if you bet a lot onto them, but it can rarely be a multi-bagger. But in America's contest, in, in America's context rather, there have been large caps that have become multi-baggers because they dominated the entire thing. Tesla, for example, you figure out everything that they've got and there's no PE. But still, it keeps going up and up on just one thing. There's a scale, there's a newness of the product that they offer, and there's no competition as such. And you can see years of growth ahead. And there's an entire auto car market, the internal, uh, the combustion engine market, which will shift to electric engines or electric car driving over the next 10, 15, 20 years. The change will be very small, but it's visible, it's predictable. So, but there, Tesla is an outlier. There will always be outliers. Yeah. 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 You know, low volatility, is that a prerequisite for capitalizing from a multi-bagger? Because, you know, if you have a volatile stock, um, it's going to throw you off. It's going to throw you off. I yeah. mean, you're not going to be able to have the stomach to hold on to it. Absolutely. So, so there are two stocks which were multi-baggers in my personal journey. A pantaloon retail and a page industries. It was easy to hold on to a page industry. I mean, it's like riding a tamed horse and riding a mad horse. Which one is easier to ride? 
maybe the mad horse would run faster but it will throw you off somewhere the horse will reach its destination but will you reach your destination because when a stock price falls 40% without reason you always start wondering should i have such a high allocation to this company and sometimes it's going to throw you off so if you have a multi bagger which has got low volatility two three considerations would immediately come it would be unpopular the liquidity would be low contrary to popular belief if the stock is illiquid the volatility will be low because if i'm thinking that the market would fall and if it's highly liquid for example if i have got reliance industries with me and if i think that the market would fall i would sell reliance now and i would say i'll buy it after one month after the market has fallen but if i've got an illiquid stock that trades 500 shares a day i know that once i sell it i can't get back in yes so low liquid stocks low uh, stocks that are low on liquidity are normally unpopular and the people who have them don't trade on to them so the volatility is almost negligible when compared to a very highly liquid stock so to that extent low volatility helps you allocate more and stay and sit back in peace how do you distinguish between you know temporary multi baggers and permanent multi baggers and again you know draw on your own experiences with multi baggers to sort of draw the line between the two high roe are we exceeding growth permanent multi bagger are we less than growth temporary multi bagger so let's look at the multi baggers that went to zero in india in the infrastructure space nagarjuna construction ivr cl and then you had the host of companies like an a to z uh, construction company and an arshia international which went up and then they came down and then you had those uh, i mean equipment supplying companies which went up and they came down and then on the other hand there was a company called maybe a thermax for example which hasn't done too much but the price doesn't collapse because the operating cash flow profile is positive when your operating cash flow is negative and you are in a cyclical business and there is scalability you get all the money in the world to grow you will get equity you will get debt and you keep growing but on the liability side you're bloating up your equity and you're taking more debt for your incremental levels of growth and when growth stops it's like somebody pulling all the air out of your bicycle you have to fall and when you fall the debt owners won't give you more money they want their money back the equity holders won't take any further equity from you they would want to sell your stock in the market and exit because they know that the story is done over and finished with so but you know there are certain sectors which by definition would be temporary multi baggers and there are certain sectors which have an opportunity to offer permanent multi baggers so i would put cyclicals in the first category in some sort of sense um no i can find temporary multi baggers in the bestest of sectors give me an example man pasand in the consumer space uh in for uh, i mean uh, penta media silver line dsk software in the software space lnt was an enduring multi bagger a stable multi bagger a permanent multi bagger lnt had 200 cousins and step brothers and step sisters who all fell by the wayside and hcc for example hindustan construction so so many of them sector does help surely i completely agree but sector leadership will ensure that your company will still hold fort for example in the textile space in the garment retailing space except for garment manufacturing space there were a company called gokul das exports blackstone came put in fresh equity and at the time we were owning page gokul das exports i don't know what they what it exports right now where it is i don't know gone and fell by the wayside and when we had page there was this company called lovable yes that also went to almost zero i don't know whether it trades or not then many people used to call me there's a company on the sme exchange called valentino Yes that's going to go and challenge page that also fell by the wayside so good sector very nice uh, tailwind growth but still the second and the third lines fell through so overall sector leadership like you correctly pointed out is an integral part but even in a good sector you will find several failures so you have to move up the curve it's like in a mango season would you have an alfanzo or any mango from anywhere if you want to have a mango have alfanzo have the best you never go for the 
second lines, the third lines, the fourth lines. And of course, Alfanzas would never be cheap. I think that example that you ended with is the perfect one because we all understand it, we all get it. And that basically underlines the basic tenet of, uh, you know, identifying multi-baggers comes back to something as fundamental as sector leadership.